We turn our attention now to Connecticut's highways. Thousands of you drive them every day, especially this Memorial Day weekend. Driving on Connecticut roadways has reached levels of danger we haven't seen in decades. Here's News 8's Mike Mascadrelli on treacherous travel. Connecticut's highways less congested, but more crashes and deaths in 2020 and 2021. Our roads now deadlier than they've ever been, and there are fewer police and less enforcement on Connecticut roadways. Is the data backing that up? Absolutely. So we're seeing record number of fatalities um, over the past four months and actually over the past three years. Reckless driving a norm now, especially on highways. We've caught on camera numerous vehicles weaving in and out of lanes, and it's caused horrific accidents. On an average year, the state witnesses 300 deadly crashes. After hitting a 50-year low in 2011, they're going back up. Connecticut this year is on track to have 400, which will be the highest since 1989, before the government enacted airbag and seatbelt laws. Experts say speeding is the biggest factor for the rise in traffic fatalities. Vehicles traveling in the 85 mile per hour range um, has really almost increased by a factor of, of five in some areas. So we're having a lot of people traveling close to 90 miles per hour um, at any given time. Yes, the message should be out there. People slow down, people are dying, the roadways are deadly. We got to get more police out there stopping cars who are driving recklessly and, and the public needs to see a, a police presence. They need to see police on our highways. But state police don't have the numbers. Troopers decreased by 30% since 2019. State police did not respond to our request for an interview, but Barone showed us data on all traffic stops they did for the last three years. State police stopped 50,000 cars for speeding in 2019 and 31,000 in 2020. Statewide, only 121,000 traffic citations were issued in 2021. That's way down from the average, 400,000. We're on track this year, if our numbers hold after the first four months, to be under 100,000 citations issued. So we've dropped by, you know, three quarters of the citations have essentially gone away. While state police enforcement during the pandemic also dropped dramatically, a News 8 review of traffic stops over the last three years shows that state police enforcement is slowly returning to pre-pandemic levels, while local police departments are lagging behind. State police are pretty much matching where they were in 2019. It's the municipalities that are down. So, you know, where we need help is the 94 towns that have police department, which is the majority of policing in the state. We have 7,000 police officers, the majority of which are municipal officers. We need them out there. Municipal police have gone from 91,000 traffic stops in 2019 to 68,000 for 2021. And there are stark contrasts between towns. In Shelton and Portland, traffic stops reduced by nearly 90% from 2019 to 2021. We asked the president of Connecticut's Police Chiefs Association to assess the data. You have to prioritize, and unfortunately, some of our cities are dealing with high levels of violent crime, you know, so, I mean, that obviously has to take precedence. Um, and then you also have to look at the geography of each, each city, you know, how the roads are structured. Studies show narrower roadways can psychologically get drivers to slow down. This aggressive driving is a phenomenon that's been a nationwide trend with fewer officers on the road. Meanwhile, this new generation of dangerous and aggressive drivers needs to see that laws will be enforced, says an instructor at Chase 2 Driving School in West Haven. I get complacent. We live in a society where we need some kind of, we need laws, we need rules and we need some type of enforcement. Vic Diaz is a strong believer in retesting every 10 years to retain licenses. He says speeding is contagious. Young drivers eventually pick it up from experienced drivers. The data is backing up the fact that 21 to 30 age group is the problem. They're pulled over more than every other age bracket, and that's been the case even before the pandemic. Looking at traffic stops by gender, nearly twice the number of males are stopped every year, indicating men may be more prone to drive dangerously. We can't get driver behavior under control. We're going to have to look to other means besides law enforcement or cars sitting on the side of the road. With the lack of officers on the highway, part of the answer could be an automated enforcement. 
Here now to provide some insight into this report is Mike Mascadrelli from News 8. And Mike, good to see you here. When, yeah, thanks for having me. You and I drive I-91 every day, the same road. We see all these speeders. What was the most shocking thing you found when you researched this story? Yeah, well, um, you know, Dennis, uh, so basically we really dived into this data talking about citations, uh, enforcement going down since the pandemic started, and just how drastic that it went down was very surprising. Essentially, we have all these citations that usually would be happening every single year that disorderly are just out of the picture now. We don't have nearly as many officers out there and that's the biggest deterrent. So every researcher was saying that we need enforcement out there. So what's the future of enforcement? Yeah, so uh, really we ended this piece here talking about automated enforcement. So that's really using uh, cameras that are out there looking for speed or you know people going through red lights. So right now the state really is exploring this and they're gonna be rolling out speed cameras on highway work zones, selected ones, but that's gonna start this fall. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what the data looks like after that. How does that work though? Because is it just a deterrent or will people actually get arrested because their picture was taken speeding? Yeah, so uh, we looked into to see how other states do it. Arizona is actually using them statewide. So actually for them down there, now they're looking at if you go through uh, one of these cameras, you're speeding, you will actually receive a citation through the mail um, and that'll be basically through the registry. That's how they have information on obviously the car that you're driving through one of these cameras. So it's believed to have to have a very similar mechanism for maybe someone going through there. Mike Mascardelli, thank you. We learned a lot from that report. Yeah, well, thank you, Dennis. Coming up, three Republicans vying to take on Senator Blumenthal this fall. You've heard from Themis Claritus and Leora Levy. Today, we're joined by Peter Lumage. Why he says he's the best candidate. That, when This Week in Connecticut continues.